To perform our live migration, I'm going to first connect to RTS Serve 1. I'm going to full screen that. I'm going to log in with my domain administrator account, so the RTS networking uh, slash administrator. Right now, we don't have any virtual machines. So I'm just going to quickly create a new virtual machine, and I'm going to accept the default for most things. I'm going to name it VM1. I'm going to just click Generation 2 because you always will. For memory, startup memory, whatever we want, I'm just going to choose 512 megabytes. You can use dynamic memory if you want to, but we're not actually going to install an operating system uh, in this. So it does not matter what we define here. Just whatever settings you believe appropriate. I can connect this to a virtual switch if I have one created. Now, keep in mind, I'm on RTS Serve 1, so we have not gone through Virtual Switch Manager and created a switch. We actually don't even have a need to do that for this demonstration. So I'm going to leave that not connected. This is going to create a new virtual hard disk, and I'm just going to leave it in the default location. It's going to be this vm1.vhdx. I will install an operating system later. I'm going to leave that option selected, and we are finished. We could review those settings. I'll select finish, and it creates the virtual machine. Now, at the server level, this is the source server. So this has the virtual machine that I intend to migrate to serve to. What I have to do is go to the settings in Hyper-V. I'm going to select live migrations. I'm going to enable incoming and outgoing live migrations. And for the incoming live, I'm going to use any available network for live migration. You could select this second option, use these IP addresses. If you had multiple network adapters in your server, you could choose a specific adapter that it would use to migrate this virtual machine from one host to another. But I only have one adapter, so there's nothing to really select. I'm just going to say use any. And I'm going to OK that. One other setting we want to define, if I go back to the Hyper-V settings, under the Hyper-V settings, I'm going to choose live migration, and I'm going to enable incoming and outgoing live migrations. For the incoming live migrations, I'm going to leave it on this, use any available network for live migration. If your server had multiple network adapters, you could select use these IP addresses and you could pick a specific IP address that you wanted to use. But I only have one network adapter with one address, so there's no point to uh, choose the second option. And I'm just going to click apply for that. I'm also going to go to this advanced features. And this says, do you want to use the authentication protocol CRED SSP, this credential security support provider, or do you want to use Kerberos? Always choose Kerberos because these machines are all joined to the same domain. If you are in the same Active Directory domain or even the same Active Directory forest, we will use Kerberos. So I'm going to click OK for that. And this machine is completely set up. Now I'm going to switch to RTS Serve 2. I'm going to sign in with my domain administrator. Now that server manager is loaded, I'm going to go to tools and I'm going to open Hyper-V Manager. On my RTS Serve 2, I'm going to right click the server and go to Hyper-V Settings. And we're just going to go through the same steps we went through in RTS Serve 1. I'm going to click on my live migrations, enable incoming and outgoing, use any available network for live migration, and I'm going to choose advanced features, and I'm going to ensure this is on Kerberos. Important you check that to make sure it's set to Kerberos. If not, it's actually going to fail because we're not using certificates. So that is all correct. So I'm going to choose OK. That's all we have to do to perform our migration. Now, I'm going to go back to my source machine, which is RTS Serve 1 that has the virtual machine. 
Now, when I want to perform the migration, you right click the virtual machine you want to migrate and you actually have to choose move. When I click move, this lets you perform your migration, but nowhere here does it actually say migration. It just keeps saying move. So that's the first thing that can be a little confusing. But we go next in the before you begin. It says, do you want to move the virtual machine? This will be a migration of the virtual machine. You can also move the virtual machine storage. This would just be a storage migration. So it would like move the virtual hard drive. An example of when you would do this. My virtual hard drive for VM1 is saved to my local machine here. But let's say you want to move it to like a storage area network or some centralized storage. You would move just the virtual machine storage, but VM1 would continue to run. It would just connect to that virtual hard drive in its new location. If you want to, let's say, decommission the server and you're going to completely get rid of this server and you want to move VM1 and have it completely run on RTS Serve 2, then you would just move the virtual machine. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to select move the virtual machine. It says specify the destination computer. For me, that is RTS serve two. Now it says, do you want to move the virtual machines data to a single location? That would be the virtual hard drive and the virtual machine configuration files that would all go to one location. Do you want to move the virtual machines data by selecting where to move the item? We saw the default location for virtual hard drives was the C drive, the users, public, public documents down through that path. And we saw the virtual machine uh, configuration file actually went to the hidden folder, like C program data and under that directory. If you want them in different locations like that, you would choose the second option. Now you could also choose to move only the virtual machine data and not move the virtual hard drive. So really you move one or the other, or just move it all to the same location. That's what I'm going to do. Move the virtual machines data to a single location. I'll choose next. Now it says specify the location. This is going to be a location on RTS serve Two, the target machine. I'm just going to create a folder named VM. This is actually going to remotely create a folder on the C drive of that machine. Or you could even browse for a location if you wanted. So this is looking at Sir RTS Serve 2. So you could go through the C drive if you wanted and you could you know choose some location uh, wherever you want it. But I don't want to do it that way. What I'm going to do is just specify this C colon slash VM and it's going to create this folder for me. And I'm just going to choose next and finish. Notice on RTS Serve 1, that virtual machine completely disappeared. It's gone. If we go back to RTS Serve 2, that VM now shows up on RTS Serve 2. If I right click the VM and go to the settings, I can see the hard drive. Notice the path is that C colon slash VM because everything was moved into that location. If I cancel that window there, and I'm just gonna open the C drive. But that's the VM folder. So you'll see that's the virtual machine files would be under that. The virtual hard disk uh, for VM1. Your snapshots, which actually they would contain checkpoints if we had created any, but the folder is just named snapshots. So all that data was moved from serve one to serve two. It's that easy to perform a migration. There are really two types of migrations at that level. One is a quick migration, which means the server's powered off, but exactly the same way if the server is running and you perform a migration, it's called a live migration, but it's the same exact steps. Just if the server is powered on, you call it a live migration. If it's powered off, you call it a quick migration. Fairly straightforward to actually configure. It's one of those things, at least to me, is much easier to understand when you see the entire process from end to end versus just you know, reading or uh, seeing bullet points related to it. But that's our full migration configuration. Now, what I'm gonna do 
is actually delete this virtual machine because we're not going to use it for anything. So I'm going to delete VM1. So now RTS Serve 2 has no virtual machines. Nor does RTS Serve 1. They're just Hyper-V hosts with no VMs hosted. 